Hi everybody, this is Agnes from No Sediment and today let's compare, contrast and taste side by side two of the most famous Spanish winemaking regions Rioja and Rivera del Duero. But before we taste these wines, let's take a moment to talk a little bit more about these fascinating regions and explore their shared characteristics as well as unique differences. Rioja and Rivera del Duero are two regions located in northern part of Spain. Interestingly, Rivera del Duero has gained recognition as a premium winemaking region only relatively recently. Despite the fact that Vega Sicilia has been producing wine there since the middle of the 19th century. Rioja, on the other hand, has a long history linked with fine winemaking and many winemakers there are proudly talking about more than a hundred year old bottles found in their cellars. Both regions, Rioja and Rivera del Duero, experience continental climate with limited precipitation. This translates to a weather characterized by extremes, hot and dry summers, cold, oftentimes even snowy winters, as well as high diurnal temperature swings. And yet, Rioja can also experience Mediterranean and maritime influences, and winemakers will often describe specific vintages as expressing one of these elements more prominently, thus shaping the wine's characteristics. Furthermore, the majority of Rioja vineyards are located at higher elevations compared to those in Rivera del Duero, which in my opinion will often translate into wines with higher acidity levels. Moving on to the grape varieties and wine styles produced in these winemaking regions. The easy and quick answer from my side would be that Rivera del Duero is essentially making wines from a single grape variety, Tempranillo, locally known as Tinta del Pais or Tinto Fino. And the vast majority of Rivera del Duero vineyards are dedicated to cultivating this grape. On the other hand, Rioja is known to be home to several grape varieties. The dominant, of course, still being Tempranillo, but it is often blended with Graciano, Masuelo, and Garnacha. While there was a period when many producers of Rioja started to make wines exclusively only from Tempranillo grape, I see shift towards making blends once again. And the most iconic and certainly amongst the most expensive wines from Rivera del Duero is the Vega Sicilia Unico, a blend of Tinto Fino and Cabernet Sauvignon. And therefore it shows, as it is often the case in the world of wine, that it really depends on the specific producer, region, sub-region, single vineyard and vintage. It depends. Despite both regions making their red wine from what is considered one of the greatest Spanish red grape variety, Tempranillo, their respective wine styles seem to me as the two sides of the same coin. Rivera del Duero wines usually are deeply colored, full-bodied, opulent, with elevated alcohol often showing rich, ripe black fruit flavors with balanced acidity. In my opinion, their use of oak seems to be there to shape the flavors of the wine. On the other hand, Rioja Reds to me seems almost lighter in body, with more resolved fruit and tannins, and dominant feature of red ripe fruits rather than black. Rioja wines will often also show livelier, more marked acidity as well as savory characteristics, especially if we are talking about Reserva and Gran Reserva categories. Before we proceed to the most fun part, the tasting, I would like to acknowledge that while both regions are well known for their red wines, they are also making white wines, some of them really impressive. Rioja in particular, for a much longer period of time, while whites under the Rivera del Duero label were allowed as recently as 2019. And let me just say that I consider Rioja white wines to be this hidden gem of European whites, and they most certainly deserve a video on their own. But now let's finally move to the tasting. I happen to have, in my opinion, 
two great examples from these regions. Reme Yuri Reserva from Rioja and Corimbo from Rivera del Duero. Both are more traditional examples of what we are expecting from these regions, Reme Yuri being Tempranillo dominant blend and Corimbo being 100% Tinta del Pai. And just to make things fair, they are not from the recent vintages in order to see how they are developing. Let's taste! Somehow it seems to me natural to start with Rioja, but before I did mention the color, so let's compare the color. So Rioja is 2014 vintage and Rivera is 2016, so Rivera is a bit younger and it also shows in the color. Rioja does show that brick, slightly garnet color, while Rivera del Duero was uh, slightly ruby, definitely showing younger age. And Rioja seemed medium deep in color, while Rivera del Duero was medium plus. But color is not the most important part of the wine, it is just a tiny fraction. So let's smell the wine. This wine has been aged in oak for 17 months and I do feel the oak influence. So the dominant feature is definitely the, the bright, I would say crunchy red fruits, fresh, crunchy, but ripe, but they are wrapped in these slightly sweeter spices, uh, maybe nutmeg, cinnamon, Lively acidity, it is not the dominant feature of the wine, but it is beautifully integrated and acts as an integral part of the wine. Yes, the tannins, they are, I would say, towards medium, medium plus, but they are beautifully resolved. They're ripe tannins, almost soft structure and uh, slightly mouth coating, but not aggressive. Uh, quite beautiful wine. The alcohol is elevated and it brings that kind of warmth on the palate, but in the same way as with acidity and in the same way as with tannins, it seems like together it is painting this whole picture of a wine rather than discussing separate elements of the wine and then putting it together like, like a Lego. Nothing really is out of the balance in this wine or screams out in the wine. It is really kind of beautifully painted picture. So let's move to wine number two, which is Corimbo Rivera del Duero 2016 vintage. Oh, <laughs> this wine definitely shows a more riper fruit profile, blue, black fruit profile, some plums, some blueberries, but these fruits are wrapped in the smoky, aromatic characteristic that we often get from the oak. This is what I said before, that oak usually plays a very important part in the wines of Rivera del Duero, flavor-wise, aroma-wise, while for Rioja wines, oak usually plays a kind of back singer vocalist idea. I was just recently to this uh, one rock band concert, which is famously known, Motley Crue, and you come to see Matli Cru, but they're of course our back vocalists. So this is what, what, what happens with Rioja wines. Like you come for Rioja and this is where you stay there. And yes, the oak is needed there, but it is back vocal. Here it is the, not the main reason you come or choose for the wine, but here the oak plays more of a shaping character. Slightly vanilla and, and sweet toast like as well. The aroma is very inviting, it is kind of, I don't want to talk too much about it, uh, let's taste. It is a big wine, it is loud wine. Loud meaning that it is there on the palate, it is rich wine. The acidity is beautifully balanced. It definitely lifts up the, the black and, and opulent type of fruit, but it's it's not the, the dominant feature. It's beautifully balanced. Yes, the alcohol is elevated, I think it is, 14, 14.5, which is something that we usually expect from Rivera del Duero. It seems to me the tannins here are more elevated, firmer, but they are ripe. They're also quite ripe and mouth coating, not aggressive. Both of these wines are separated by two hour drive with a car, yet they are very, very different. And I think this is what makes the wine world so beautiful. Both of these wines are made from dominant grape variety, which is Tempranillo, and it really beautifully shows that these 200 kilometers apart makes these wines very different. One is fuller, richer in body, uh, opulent, black fruited, 
wine. I'm talking about Rivera del Duero. And the other one is, of course, maybe more traditional, more resolved, more savory uh, on the palate and on the nose. And yes, of course, we can discuss the 2014 vintage was maybe a bit uh, cooler and and uh, and cloudier than 2016. But uh, still, I think these wines really represent quite iconically the two different styles of, of these winemaking regions. Let me know in the comments which region you prefer the best. Is it Rioja or is it Rivera del Duero? And if you do enjoy Tempranillo grape variety and you want to know a bit more about it, I also made a video.